I get emails every week from frustrated players asking me to help rerune or farm for them, which I know most of you know I don't do by now. I tried doing count renovations back in the day, which was a horrible idea and a huge waste of time for me, but just because I can't spend weeks farming for people and fixing counts doesn't mean I can't help the people struggling to guide them on the right path. So today we're going to discuss how struggling players can fix their accounts. The absolute biggest problem I see with either new or returning players that struggle with their accounts is that they are wild unrealistic with their goals and they refuse to be honest with themselves about the time energy and money it takes to do some of the things that they're trying to do this is the part you're going to be tempted to skip because many of you will feel it's not important but this is one of the biggest mistakes I see people making with not only summoners war but with many things in their lives over and over again Understanding the situation you're in and being realistic about what effort needs to be made to get whatever results you're looking for, both in Summoner's War and in any area of your life. So back to Summoner's War. First and foremost, you need to be brutally honest with yourself about what you're hoping to achieve. There's no wrong way to enjoy the game, but you must have realistic goals and be honest with yourself. If your goal is to casually have fun, spend little to no money, and not take PvP too seriously, then that's fine and probably the healthiest goal in a 9-year-old pay-to-win gacha game, where the odds are already stacked against you and you can easily achieve that goal of playing casually for fun and not worrying about competing too much. If your goal is to compete at the top Top level of PvP, whether it's RTA, Guild Siege, Arena, etc., then you need to determine realistically how far away from achieving that goal you are, how long it's going to take to get there, how much money and resources will be required, and if achieving that goal will actually make you happy or not. For example, I know many people that have made goals to compete in G3 Siege and be top 100 in RTA, spent thousands of dollars to build their accounts, had automation software farming 24 7 to maximize resources, and when they were finally playing that level of G3 combat, content just absolutely miserable and full of regret. Now I'm not trying to dissuade you from having those goals, I just need you to be really honest with yourself about how realistic they are and if you're willing to put all the time and money into achieving them or if that investment from you would be better allocated to improving another area of your life like education, family, relationships, etc. because you may just be pursuing goals that are unrealistic and wouldn't make you happy in the first place. That being said, whatever your goal is in Summoner's War, I just want you to be happy and enjoy the way you spend your time. Now that we've got that out of the way, if you do want to be competitive and continue to improve, there are a few things that we need to cover, the basic fundamentals of gacha games. In all gacha games, not just Summoner's War, the best time to start is either at launch or before launch in beta if possible because it's the most even playing field or at beta you have the advantage over people that won't get to play until launch. Even playing fields means less stress for you. The longer a gacha game progresses in its life cycle, the harder it is for a new player to catch up and realistically compete because let's say for example, you start playing a year after the launch of a game and your goal is to have caught up by the second anniversary, that means you'll have one year to make the same progress as other players in the community did after two years of playing, so you'll have to put twice the effort in. Now this is just in theory because gacha games have methods in place to help new players catch up, they have resource events, power creep of new monsters, more generous with new player resources, gifts, and packages. They don't fully make up for the time, but they can cut down the year of progress you would have had to make down to like eight months. The real struggle for you is that Summoner's War Sky Arena is a nine-year-old game, so a new player will need to make nine years of progress to catch up. Even with power creep and new player incentives, that may cut down the time by half, but that's still quite a lot of time. That's why I recommend playing for fun and not competition. You're already fighting a losing battle. You don't need to make it more stressful for yourself. Okay, enough of that. You get it by now, right? So let's actually discuss things that will help you actually make progress faster and more effectively. Set goals, like actual goals. Break them down into smaller, more realistic milestones. For example, if you're new, one of your goals could be to get to 300 speed with your swift attack age booster for arena, so your roadmap for that goal could be broken down into steps. Build a reliable Giants B12 team, get to 250 speed, improve your Giants B12 team, get to 270 speed, get to 285 speed, build a faster speed team for Giants, and then get to 300 speed. You could also set goals like reaching C1, C2, C3, etc. in Arena, getting 10 out of 10 wins in a C3 Guild Siege, having a 30% win rate on your Arena defense, etc. Set smaller milestones and to continue to check up on your progress over time and make small improvements that will compound 
over time. Focus. Anyone trying to build 100 monsters at a time is going to be overwhelmed, frustrated, and fail miserably. It doesn't help you to build 100 monsters poorly and then quit every week because your monsters all suck since they're not scaled up or ruined properly. Stop building dozens of projects at the same time, put everything you're working on in storage, and take out between 1 to 4 units that are the highest priority to build right now and focus on only those units until you're finished with their awakening, 6 star, runes, artifacts, gems, grinds, and skill ups. Don't allow yourself to move on to new projects unless you're finished with your current projects. Create a schedule. Just like you do at the gym or at work, you can create a farming schedule split for Summoner's War. This might keep you from being burned out or bored, even if it's something as simple as this example right here, where you do Giants on Monday, Dragons Tuesday, Necropolis Wednesday, Punisher's Crypt Thursday, Steel Fortress Friday, R5 Saturday, and Rift Beast Sunday. It's super easy and will keep your account from becoming unbalanced over time, which is a problem for a lot of casual players having unbalanced accounts from farming only one or two things constantly and neglecting the rest. Maximize your free resources. This obviously starts with Summoner's Way and doing events, TOA, and mock battles at its very basic, but it also really emphasizes guild content, which is a large stockpile of crystals, runes, scrolls, and more if you aggressively farm Siege, Labyrinth, King Slime, and Guild Wars. There's a very noticeable difference in a free-to-play account that aggressively farms guild content versus a free-to-play account that does not. Guild content farming can easily generate over $100 US dollars worth of free resources every month, and that's on the low side. This also applies to Inter-Server Arena, but to a lesser extent because Inter-Server Arena is mostly just free scrolls. Don't neglect Artifacts. We all know rune farming is one of the key components of Summoner's War, but that also includes artifacts as well, which a lot of casual players just don't farm at all. Now, while it's true that in the beginning artifacts were pretty crappy, and I originally made videos talking about how low impact they were, the artifact buff patch a while ago improved them quite significantly and made them a necessary part of building your units. While it was passable to just farm enough artifacts to make sure your units had a few blue ones in the beginning, the artifact buff patch changed all of that to make them a necessary part of the game. This is not just for additionals, those extra damage subs and decreased damage subs are game changing. They can stop damage dealers from nuking your units down or help your units finish the job instead of having enemies alive with a sliver of health ready to heal up to full. I guarantee you every time you leave enemy Abelio left with 1% HP because you neglected artifacts, you will remember me saying this. That being said, don't neglect gems and grinds either. For the same reason, grinding and gemming your units is equal to roughly two extra runes worth of value. You can't expect to compete with vanilla runes that are ungemmed and ungrinded. Every little bit helps. Build fast and efficient dungeon teams. Even if they're not perfect, if you can make a dungeon team that's 90 seconds instead of 3 minutes, you can farm twice as many resources. It sounds simple, but every little bit helps when you're trying to catch up. This also should go without saying, but make sure you actually use those fast efficient dungeon teams to farm the dungeons. Stop farming scenario. After a point, probably like 6 months into the game, you really don't need to be farming much of Scenario. Maybe once in a while, but I see players making that 50% to 90% of their farming routine and they've been playing for years. In the beginning, farming Scenario this much is normal, but don't get into the habit of continuing that throughout mid-game. 20% or less, only when you have something to build, is sufficient. You'll get enough Rainbow Mon from Rift of Worlds content and weekly Guild Shop Rainbow Mon that you don't need to level up so much in Scenario after early game. Do RTA. Yes, I know you hate me for saying this, and I'm not saying take it seriously and try hard. I just mean get your account queued up into battles at least a couple times a week and just cleave or auto or whatever you have to do to get points to buy scrolls. That's right, get scrolls. They're cheap in the RTA shop, and the more Comptoist sees actual players doing RTA, the more they may be incentivized to remove some of the non-player bot accounts they use to reduce queue times. It really doesn't even matter if you win or not. Just try to get points from those random achievements every season, even if it's like 50 to 100 matches, it's free scrolls, and when winning isn't the goal and just completing matches is, it's a different mindset. You don't get as mad for losing because, like I said, winning wasn't really necessarily the goal in the first place. Raise your standards. The easiest way to do this is to go through at the end of every month and clear out the 10% of your runes, artifacts, grinds, and gems that are the worst value. You can do this easily by sorting by grade, removing slot 2, 4, 6 flat stats, slot aside from speed, of course, slot 6 resistance in most cases or runes that make no sense with the stats, like blue endure runes with crit damage and flat defense subs, or swift runes that have no speed. Use technology as leverage. So, the high 
hyper competitive people you are competing with in Summoner's War at this late stage of the game will absolutely be using many forms of technology as leverage to beat you. If you are trying to casually farm manually and calculate runes and strategies by hand versus other players using automated 24-7 farming with databases, speed tick calculators, and repositories of player data and more, you stand little to no chance. It's like a green belt in karate trying to fight Iron Man. It's a losing battle, and if you want to take it seriously, you need to leverage every form of technology to be able to keep up. This means bookmarking websites that have access to metagame data, as well as using automation tools to keep your account farming 24-7, which does use a lot of crystals, which is why they're not free to play, or even close, but it's part of the game and many other gacha games, which is why high-level PvP is not really accessible for most people. Learn how to counter the meta. You don't have to know how to counter every single team in the world. All you need to do is be able to effectively counter the most meta teams. If you can only clear five different styles of team in arena, or the 10 most popular RTA units, or the five most popular siege defenses, then you're actually in a pretty good spot. Just learn to counter some of the most popular things, and they'll put you in a really good spot without being overwhelmed. The beautiful thing about this is that in arena, you don't have to hit every defense. You can only hit the ones you're actually good at countering and skip the rest. The same with Guild Siege if you get in early and you have a lot of base options. In RTA, on the other hand, if you're good at countering the 10 most popular units, it turns out the units you build to pick against them are probably at least decent at countering a lot of the other similar stuff your opponent will throw at you as well. If you're prepared to counter more Oliver Robo Control Cleave teams, Ciara Gianna teams, and Ragdoll, Verb, Leo, LD immunity teams, you should already be prepared for half your battles before you even start to queue. Join a helpful guild and communicate with them. This is kind of hit or miss, because half the guilds out there just like to yell about contribution and members not hitting lab stages, and those are usually the guilds that have a revolving door with people joining, getting sick of being yelled at, and leaving. But a good guild will collaborate together and help each other grow and improve their gameplay experience. Okay, I'm done talking now. Good job for sticking through it. Even if you take a few things out of this video, your account will be much better for it. So have a great rest of your day. Hope this was helpful, and I will see you as always in the next one.